And David, when I first met you, I don't, I'm, I'm hoping you remember, but I couldn't believe the energetics that you were throwing off in the first moment I met you. And I started to start sweating and I was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like I've definitely, and you said that that moment that it wasn't even on, that you were just charged up from a previous session. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know that there's, a, feels like a reverberation of good vibes that you carry with you, but it's it's real and you can feel that. And I hope anyone listening right now is picking up on that. Tell me more about your healing journey. How that yeah. go? So, oh, where to begin? It, it honestly starts at the beginning. When I was 10 days old, I was diagnosed or I was baptized because I had meningitis. And so I was born with meningitis. They were nervous enough to want to baptize me that I could pass on at that moment and struggled with many different really uh, like uh, traumatic brain injury, like head injury those were some of the core of my health challenges growing up. And then that translated to a lot of anxiety, depression. I had a wrongful arrest as a teenager and these different incidences brought up other challenges, um, alcohol abuse, anxiety, depression. It, it was a really hard time eating disorder and I started to need help. And part of my health was actually performance-based. I was also a coll collegiate swimmer, an athlete, NCAA division one swimmer, and I wanted to be the best swimmer I could be. So I started doing yoga to help me be an amazing athlete, which I didn't know at the time was starting my healing journey. I was 16, going late to high school, sometimes missing class to go to yoga. And I would say probably right around the time of I would say during college, it was some of the traditional approaches, nutritionist for the eating disorder, you know, therapist, psychiatrist for the mental health, the anxiety, the depression, and then just feeling like this is not working. And then me getting extremely curious, which turned into me studying first movement, again, coming off the athletics, but deeper into the yoga, and then wanting to understand the nutrition and then eventually it got to the point where, oh, meditation, like meditation has to be a part of this. And I think that's really where things started to shift. I spent a month on an ashram in the Bahamas, learning yoga and some different practices there. And uh, I'm a daily meditator, 20 minutes a day, non-negotiable. And uh, yeah, th those are some of the highlights. There are some different aspects to my journey you know, I went on to explore some experiences with plant medicine, went on to have some experiences with some shamanic healing, and it's all been really powerful. And it all feels like it served a point in time, but the, the real turning point, and I would say this happened probably a year ago, was I could notice this distinction between insert sourcing and outsourcing my power and having the knowledge versus applying it like the difference between the living and the learning the, the learning and the living and and those two things of like hey where am, am i just looking outside for all these things and do i just know a lot what am i actually doing with what i know that was like a, a real catapult so i'm probably still in some integrating of, of that but uh mm -hmm. that's been really powerful right so what happened that caused that shift and trigger that healing process? Is there one moment or one aha moment that you experienced? You know, hindsight is something, but I would say a part of it, I started to practice extremely diligently Kundalini yoga. And there was a six month period that I was doing 4 a.m. two hours a day for six months every day. Oh. And that felt like its own kind of catapult. And it was a really beautiful practice for me. I still incorporate facets of it. But in that, some of the teachings showed that to me around the insourcing and the outsourcing. And it was such a clear distinction. And the other element that I would add is like the enhancement of my relationship with truth. And like, you know, truth and you know, non-truth. It's hard to really put into words beyond that. Mm -hmm. And those, those aspects, including intuition, it felt like they just all really clicked. And so that's a little bit longer answer than I wanted to give you, but it's that that was definitely a part of all that lining up. Okay. So now forward, fast forward now to present day, mm -hmm. um, how has all, our experience and knowledge to help other people? Yeah. You know, 
questions are really powerful and the inner questioning that one can go through with themselves. And if you're not able to go through that question with yourself, the assistance of a coach, you know, I can help people ask questions that they may not on their own ask themselves. So that's one of my favorite coaching tools. It's kind of coaching 101. And to get people to be in that inner inquiry, to start to know themselves on that deeper level, my relationship with my intuition was always there, but was I always tapped into it? No. And that took time. And so to help people on that journey and to start to really refine that, it feels like one of the greatest gifts to be able to do that with people and really questions is a powerful tool. I can gain insights from what I've been through and then help translate that in an understandable way to relate to people where they are. It's about meeting someone where they are and there's no way I could have gone through every single thing exactly how they're going through it. But can I translate from my experience, ask compelling questions, create a space, safe space, and uh, what what can happen? And there feels like a lot of magic, right? And and what are the you know the the things and the issues that people want help with when they come to you? What is the you know the common denominator? Yeah, one thing I notice is it, start, it usually starts with one thing and ends up becoming a few other things. Uh, so some of those entry points, it's been like actually a body dysmorphia, usually a body acceptance, some kind of like self-shaming, maybe even, I don't want to say an eating disorder, but it could feel like disordered eating. You know, I'm not a mental health practitioner, so I want to make that very clear. And so anything that sounds like that is not me. Uh, I stay within the bounds and whenever it gets beyond that, someone may need additional support. Uh, but the, the body, like body image issues is, is a common one. Uh, I would say people feeling like they're not living their full potential. So like they can just feel like there's more to give. They may not be able to even fully put their finger on it yet, but they just know there's something else. Usually that does have to do with career. Maybe they already have started a business, but they're not seeing the success that they want to see. Those are the two most common. And uh, I have worked with past athletes, which is a is a huge passion of mine based on my athletic career as well. So that's mm -hmm. really fun. So tell me um, how you've been able to incorporate uh, the cheek coils. Yes, I have mine right here. Yeah. Okay. Into your own personal practices and, and with clients and so on. Yeah. So one of my favorite things to do is to use this as part of my meditation. And so I'll pick a track that I enjoy. I will, you know, make sure it's all synced up, get the Bluetooth, everything right. And I usually just hold it right in my palms and enjoy that during meditation. And it just takes the meditation to a totally different space and level. I can, it is hard to put into words. It's, it's a feeling and it feels deeper. It feels, uh, it does feel quantum and extremely powerful. I've also used it. I struggle with migraines and I, at the worst, I was getting up to five or six a month. And, you know, I'm at a point right now where it might be this month was a little challenging, closer to three, uh, but one to three is more where I'm at. So it's felt like a win from five to six. Mm -hmm. And I actually, this past weekend was really struggling. And so I was laying them on my heart and on my abdomen and just really letting that on. There was one for headaches and head pressure. And I let it cycle through those tracks and I had took three naps in one day. And so it was like, just every time I'd wake up, please feel better. And it was my second nap that I used the cheek oils and they, I just started to feel that relief. And, you know, if I can finish the day without a migraine and have even some part of my day migraine free. So probably around one, I started to turn and feel better. That's a huge win for me that I'm not losing the whole day. So, mm -hmm. uh, that, and I, I was sharing you know, with you earlier, it's becoming part of my muscle memory, right? And so it's like, use the cheek oil. Yeah. It's right there. You know, it's like breath, like, okay, I'm breathing. And, but in that moment, I'm like, day one, forgot to use it. And then day two, I'm like, oh yeah, use the cheek oil. And it was a lot of relief. And I also like the magnets. I like to hold the magnet on the North. You can have it um, oriented with the North on whatever part of your body and you know yeah. i can just feel that vibration so, so you put the north um onto away away from the body right? okay then i was doing it a little wrong but no. i don't think i was doing it wrong every time 
No, um, I think there's there's a different effect if you put north uh, uh, towards the body or out of the body. I think north towards the body, I forgot what what it is, but one of them uh, will open and expand more, and the other one will focus. It's kind of like yin and yang. You know how yeah. you have the two coils there. Can you, can, uh -huh. you show, can you see those? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you this can show. This is my yang. The yang and the yin. Yep. Got my yin. Yeah. So what what kind of um, have you tried them separately? Do you, have you felt the difference? I I have them, and I don't know why, but I've used them together. I it's like I'm like ah, am I too much of one? I probably if I had the guest run a little more yang. So if I was working just with the yin, that might be supportive. But I have yet to do that yet. Um, yeah, so they have different effects. If you use the yin only, most people need more yin than yang, just, um, mm -hmm. you know, energetically speaking, um, mm -hmm. you know, actually it's one of the, uh, the foundations of TCM, mm -hmm. traditional Chinese medicine. Like we all need more yin than yang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so most people would just use the yin most of the time, but then using both is a really great tool for balancing your, your chakra, balancing your, your energies. Yeah. yeah that's been calling me the balancing component but if i just unplug the yang the y the yang then i can just use the yin on its own mm -hmm. cool yeah that Maybe tends today's to, a day for that that tends to work better for the pain relief awesome. so if you're having migraines that might even work uh, faster for you okay yeah. what what frequencies do you like most or the ones that you've used so yeah far? If, if you wouldn't mind i'd like to just make sure i'm being accurate here i'm like uh, so right now I have it on the polygonal right now. Okay. Um, I've enjoyed, I really like the, the pineal gland activation mm -hmm. and oh, I think it's under, yeah. The great pyramid harmonics is my oh, favorite. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So tell, really tell me the experience with those. That one I use a lot with the <laughs> the meditation and that was my attempt to <laughs> explain it. It just feels you know quantum feels like a word that feels a bit otherworldly and very powerful and um yeah it's like just a deeper experience of meditation you know i would say i don't know if i would say exactly astral traveling um but maybe like it just feels like i'm going to where i need to go in that moment mm -hmm. and then normal i feel a very strong connection to the pyramids like mm -hmm. especially recently and so that's been really feeling okay yeah so you're so you're, you're able to get deeper and get into those those altered states faster you would mm -hmm. say yeah definitely faster. definitely yeah and the um the other oh the sound of the sun dna healing i really like and then i on the master list i use uh luck boost and abundance and regenerate Oh, you know, one experience I had though, I did, fo I, I've used focus during work. It works. <laughs> like really where I was like hours went by of just cruising, working. And sometimes I can just get a little distracted and pop out of work. So the day I, I haven't done it as much as I, again, it's becoming muscle memory, but the day I, I will never forget the day I use focus. I think it might've been a four hour time block that just felt like a minute. It was really amazing amazing mm -hmm. you kind of get into a zone right you get into yeah. a, like a trance or focus <laughs> <laughs> i was like whoa i didn't even know i could do that <laughs> mm -hmm. so so how do you think that this uh technology could help um uh, people like your clients uh entrepreneurs professionals or athletes yeah i mean if you're open if you're open and even if you're not what what i would say is that most people that orient to some kind of high performance practice, which all those things you named athletes, entrepreneurs, professionals usually do, uh, it's to me a no brainer. They're absolutely gorgeous. I, you know, that's the first thing that caught my eye is how beautiful they are. And that alone feels like an activation. Then you're actually able to tune into your body and see what do I need? And so then you're tuning in, right? That in sourcing and you're able to utilize the sound and the energy frequencies to enhance what you need. And so thinking about focus and work, right? That, that I think it's two hours and 48 minutes are lost a day in distraction, mm -hmm. right? And so if you could translate that into something else, I think for one hour of every, just one hour, one hour of deep work 
is the equivalent of, I believe, three hours of distracted work. Right. Right. And so just that alone to be able to enhance, to tune in, to dial in uh, for the healing modalities. And I've used this in conjunction. I'm with, I'm with my husband. I have this going. He's with me. I know he can tell a difference because I'm different. You know, I don't know how he's relating to this fully yet, but it's he definitely is because of my relating to them. And so yeah. you're changing your environment with others as well. And most of us, if not all, I would say all of us have a relationship with other people. And so mm -hmm. if you want to enhance your relationships with others, it's a great amplifier of that as well. Yeah. What, what's hap what happens is the people around you will absorb it from you. Mm -hmm. right? So let's say you got all charged up from the coil. Mm -hmm. um, other people will get charged up from you if you are next to them. It's like you are the big, you're the crystal. You are the, you know, the, the, you know, the satellite dish or whatever. The am you're, amplifier yeah, feels like a, a word I keep, you know, you're the amplifier. Yeah. It, it basically, when you um, get charged up with the chi coils, it raises your frequency and it, it projects itself in many ways. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the basic way would be the, the sound of your voice is different. Mm -hmm. um, it, it conveys, it, it pierces or it's louder or it's, um, you know, more solid or more, more emotional or more passionate. Um, second of all, your body language changes mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Your facial expression changes. Um, so all those things that you can easily see on a basic level change. And then there's the other higher levels that are invisible, such as your aura. Mm -hmm. uh, well, some people can see auras, but most people can't, but um, uh, your aura changes, right? But if you can measure it with the machine, you can actually mm -hmm. see your aura is huge. It gets mm -hmm. really big and re really bright. And what else? Um, you can actually hear higher pitch, um, this higher pitch sound in your ears. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. tried this in meditation. When you get into those really high states, you can hear a, like a ringing in your ears. Mm -hmm. Have you had that before? Some people yeah, can. Yeah, I, I get that pretty regularly in general yeah it doesn't right. feel like tinnitus yeah it's not tinnitus because yeah. that's uncomfortable and that's kind of debilitating but this is actually it feels like your head is expanded uh-huh it's like your your uh awareness is expanded so you can hear more frequencies mm -hmm. and you can see more colors and it just you can it's feel like the sharpening of the perceptions exactly yeah mm -hmm. so that happens to you as well and um yeah, on many levels. And then what happens is you, be, you, you're, you have more energy, right? Obviously, you have more energy. You have no pain. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have pain, that pain goes away faster, much faster than normally, right? Without mm -hmm. any medication. Um, so for athletes, for example, right now, I'm training three to five times a week boxing, and I recover like crazy, like really fast. Wow. I recover like I'm 16 years old. I'm 42 now. Awesome. Right. I mean, people like like usually people like me, 42, who aren't aren't professional athletes. I'm not professional. Right. Uh -huh. And they go train. They get all these like aches and, and they can't you know, they probably have to work out two or three days later before they recover. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, I've been using um, I mean, obviously, I've been using the coils. I'm using another program called Qi Energy AI and I layer it together. And the next day I have no more no more soreness. It's crazy. Wow. I'm back in the gym and I'm you know, performing at 100%. So so for athletes, I think that's great. I'm not a professional athlete, but I think um, professional athletes, absolutely, if you're doing it as a as a career, mm -hmm. you definitely need this because it's going to enhance your performance so much better. And, well, and I think too, at the collegiate level, you know, you may be on scholarship, you may be, you know, in some ways that is professional. A lot of the rules have changed for collegiate athletes where you can monetize you know, if you're looking at that as a career at that phase of your life, and often athletes don't go past college athletics. So it's like, that is your window to do it at the highest level. Mm -hmm. it's, it feels like a no brainer. And sometimes there's a little money left over from the scholarship that you could make an investment like that, or you have the overexcited parents that are like, do whatever they need to do to help you get to that next level, mm -hmm. you know, utilize whatever that is. Yeah. And um, so speaking as an entrepreneur as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. um, so I run five businesses now and um, and it's doing very, very awesome. I was doing very great. And, uh, you know, you know, as entrepreneurs, we always have stress, right? Mm -hmm. Things don't always go the way that we want. 
uh, and things don't always happen as fast as we want. Mm -hmm. So it, it may cause a lot of anxiety, stress, and kind of frustration, mm -hmm. which I think every entrepreneur goes through. Mm -hmm. So when you're using- Always on the verge of burnout. Yes. And, and or you are, are burnout. <laughs> yeah, burned out. You are burned out on the verge of burnout uh, and you're exhausted and you kind of like, it's just every day is just a grind and every day is just a uphill battle. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I've been there and I think everybody goes through that as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, um, but using the frequencies, I mean, on the basic level, what it does is just relieve the stress, mm -hmm. right? When you relieve the stress, that takes care, of, I would say at least 50, if not 80% of all your problems, <laughs> right? Because it's the stress that causes the, you know, all the negative emotions and the frustrations, right? If, if you can just relieve the stress and just relax, um, everything seems to just work out by itself. I'm not saying just, you know, don't do anything in your business. I mean, but what happens is when you change your mindset and when you change your emotion and your frequency, things just happen to become easier. It's kind of same as in sports, right? If you're really tense and you're really, like, really, um, um, you know, uh, kind of like performance anxiety. Yeah, performance anxiety, or or even when you're, you know, when you're swimming. If you're tense, you're gonna sink, right? Technically, <laughs> right? You, you have to, you have to keep, you have to breathe. You have to, you have to keep your muscles relaxed so that you can float, and also you can be the most efficient with your muscles. So muscles, right? So the same thing happens when you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you're the most, your brain and your creativity and your productivity is most efficient when you relax. Mm -hmm. So when people are exhausted and they're stressed out, they're basically kind of fighting at them themselves, mm -hmm. right? Whereas it's not really the, I mean, there are circumstances that are causing you stress, but then what's really this causing you stress is really yourself. So if you could just change your perspective and also change your frequency and dissipate that stress using the chi calls or the frequencies, then that takes care of 50%, 80% of your problem. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, and then you have all this freed up energy to direct into actually solving the perceived problem and you have more clarity to do that. And then so 50, 80% of the stress is re reduced. You can channel the rest of that energy to solve the problem. You know, everything shifts from there. And that what felt like the 80% elephant in the room may now be 5% and, and you handle it much quicker and it's it's done I, when you were talking about that, I use a formula, heal, be, and create. I think that people need to clean up whatever the past is holding them back, have the ability to be in the present and then create their future in whatever that way life is expressing through you. Mm -hmm. And what you're sharing with the stress release, but also just the being, like, I think a lot of people have challenges and I was one of these people, I couldn't just be, I felt like I was crawling out of my skin and I, I remember the first time I meditated for one minute and it literally, that's the only way I can describe it. I felt like I was just crawling out of my skin. And so to be able to be in myself with my system, that full embodiment, and I believe the chi coils are a huge enhancement of that mm -hmm. because it reduces that stress load. And so when the stress is reduced, oh, it feels different to be in my body when I don't feel all the stress and anxiety that a moment ago, I felt like I was crawling out of my skin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like how you uh, used to be, be, be present, right? Because I think mm -hmm. what causes us a lot of frustration a lot of times is we're not present. We're in the past or in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. We're in the past, we're trying to change the past of something that happened and we kind of loop ourselves because, oh, why does that happen? What could I, you know, um, you know, why that happen? I could have done this, could have, would have, should have. should have. Right? <laughs> right? And we get stuck in that point and we never move forward and we, because we never stay present because you can't change the past. The only thing you can change is the present, mm -hmm. right? looking for, towards the future or people are looking in the future too much. They say, oh, I mm -hmm. wish that, wish this, wish that. Or what if- When this if, happens, when this happens, then mm -hmm. all. Yeah, when this happens, exactly, right? So, so, but then that never comes because it's always in the future. You can't change, the, <laughs> you can't make an action in the future. You can only make it, take an action in the present. Mm -hmm. So, so I like how, what you said about uh, being able to stay present. Yeah. And that, that's a real tragedy because that can, exactly what you explained can rob one's life. And right now I'm recording with you, right? In a few moments, I'm going to attend to a little laundry. In a few moments after that, I'm going to do some emails. Like I have all these different things that I'm going to do in a day. They all look and feel different and I get to be in all of them. 
And that's a key, right? That I get to be, I get to be. And that's that too, you know, thinking back to some of our previous conversation that I get to literally with everything, it changes everything. And I, I get to, I get to, but if I can't be in any of it, then I don't get to, cause I'm not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the last part? It was the healing and then the B and then the create create. Okay. So tell me more about the creative part. Yeah. The creative part, you know, whether you are, I, I can't hit the spectrum of all the things one could create, but I believe that life force energy is flowing through all of us. And we have each a blueprint of how that can create, can express in the highest expression. So for some that could be through parenthood for others, it could be through community service for someone else. It could be through entrepreneurship. You know, we could literally list everything. And so when each person looks at their gifts and where what their flow of energy is that feels most supportive of them feels that alignment right I was at a workshop a few weeks ago and a nurse was talking about how she like feels so burnt out on nursing well is that in her is that in her alignment right and maybe that's no longer in alignment for her and so you're doing that inner inquiry for what's resonant and if there's something that's on your heart and mind that you want to do and you're not doing it's taking those shifts to direct your creative energy to and through that. So it's going to look different for everyone, but we all have the ability to create something. It could be my meal I'm making tonight. I'm a trained chef, right? So cooking, that's creating, you know, artists, they're creating art. There's so many ways. And there's a very profound moment with a loved one in my life where they're feeling really stagnant. And I said, you know, you're not growing. You're not, you're not moving like towards, and it's not to take you out of the now, but if you're in that stagnation, you're no longer creating, life can feel so hard. And if you just can fine tune some of that and find that alignment and then take those actions each day, that's the creating. And again, it, it looks different for everyone. Uh, I, I find it quite simple to like kind of poke around and figure out, you know, what, what could that be? And usually it's just, what do you love? And then find a way that you can create from that. Yeah, uh, I think creativity comes a lot from inspiration and dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and then you mentioned using a pineal gland, right? So mm -hmm. uh, frequency. So so what happens if you don't know what a pineal gland is? It's like this little little uh, gland in the middle of your brain, and mm -hmm. uh, the strange. It's this very strange um, part of your brain because it has photoreceptors, same as your eye, so it can absorb light. So it has the same kind of like structure as your eyeballs, but it's in the middle of your head. Where there's no light going to in like, the darkest place of your in your possible brain <laughs> yeah um so um but apparently it can receive light and it can see so that's why they call it the third eye right so um and when you activate it what happens is your dreams become more vivid you can um recall your dreams more sometimes even lucid dreaming which means you 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 can control your own dream that you're aware that you're dreaming uh, and what happens is your your visualization is a lot more vivid too. Like even when you close your eyes and you visualize a design or you visualize artwork or you visualize some kind of sports technique, even, you know, how, how athletes, they visualize themselves taking a shot, you know, hundreds of times or hitting that ball hundreds and thousands of times in their mind, they're actually training those, um, uh, you know, your, your muscle memory with just your brain. I could do my hundred fly to the hundredth through visualization and practicing. Right. Yeah. So, so with a stronger or, or, or more active and, um, uh, healthy pineal gland, mm. that ability increases. Mm. So it's an ability that is not muscular ability. It's a, it's a pineal gland ability. It's a, you can call that a psychic ability even. Mm -hmm. And I will add my psychic ability has been, uh, whether honed in, fine-tuned, it's been noticeably enhanced in the past few weeks. And my dreams, I don't know why I didn't put it together until you just said it, but my dreams have been pretty insane the yeah. past few weeks as well. Yeah, so that's been cool. And that's from the chi coils? I would have to imagine it's had something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a thing or two okay yeah or it's just pure coincidence maybe but it, it feels related and the the intuition has been noticeable and what's been lovely about it is it's allowed me 
it it's, feels so keen that it allows me to relax into it. Where for me with intuition, it can feel so strong that and the psychic, it can feel so strong and it un, almost uncomfortable with the novelty of it. Like, whoa, this is real. Like that, I felt like for years, like, whoa, this is real. And it just, every time I'm like surprised. Mm -hmm. And I noticed over the past few weeks that I could just trust and deepen into it and just be like, yes, it's real. And like, it just feels deeper and steadier and maybe not controlled, but it, that's the word I want to use, like more controlled. Mm -hmm. I'm lacking the, the, the best word right there. Uh, I think, I think you're more like in tune with it or resonating more with it. That's, that's mm -hmm. when it happens. I think when, when we re reach that flow state in our lives, you know, how mm -hmm. athletes get that state is a, whoa, everything's working so perfectly. I'm executing everything perfectly. Or I just, you know, I'm performing and beat my records and all that stuff. And you realize, hey, this is really happening. And it's all from, you know, all the training that you've done. But also it has to do with your mindset and how you're, you're resonating, how your mind is resonating at that point in your life. And you realize, okay, this is what I've visualized. And now I've actually uh, manifested it. And now mm -hmm. I'm actually living it or actually executing it. And you realize um, that you kind of become resonating with what you have been projecting all that time. Right? It's like that you're catching up with the deja vu. Yeah. In a way. I know. That's I've... good. That's it. That's it. <laughs> deja vu is about okay. Anyway, that's going well. The day you know, when you feel like you have deja vu, you know, you may have actually already visualized it and now you're living it. To me, yeah. that could feel like deja vu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you're but you're it you're you're caught in the deja vu. You're that's living true. it. You're you know, living the visualization. Yeah. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but thank you. It's been a real powerful enhancer and I'm just at the beginning of that road. So I'm excited to continue this relationship with the Chi Coils. And, uh, you know, one thing that I use with my clients, the first session that we have to start the coaching container is called the activation session. And this is an obvious, like to have this going during an activation session, I guide them through a visualization. Uh, I'm excited to see what evolves from that. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So I'm glad that you're getting really good results and, and uh, helping other people with it too. Yeah. So that's, that's um, um, my, my mission and my purpose is, is to raise the resonance of the, of the world. Like uh, my goal, our goal as a company is to have 1 million people healed and impacted through our technologies. Um, you know, one day we'll get there, but I think it's, um, it's really important and I think this is the future uh, of medicine because energy is just so much more efficient and affordable, first of all, for, for people because compared to medication, which has side effects and compare, you know, which, um, you know, sometimes like only a percentage of it, it works at some times and you have to buy refills and you have to, um, Sometimes they're not available to, to get. And now you're on five or six and now they have side effects from the other ones. Exactly. Yeah. So problems you didn't have before. Right. And many people are starting to realize that that's not the way to heal. Mm -hmm. It's actually the way to stay sick. Right. Right. right? Um, and, you know, they say, you know, that's what the big pharma wants to do because they want people to stay sick because they're in the sick business, not in the health business. Health business actually helps people heal and mm -hmm. become healthy or stay healthy. Sickness business keeps people sick. Um, the misnomer of healthcare. Exactly. So, and I experienced that myself when I was sick for 10 years with ulcerative colitis, which is incurable. And, and, uh, and I was able to heal it with frequency, with just the, with just the devices, um, which kind of, op which opened my eyes. And I say, well, why, why isn't more people using this? Why, why isn't this more mainstream? So, so my goal is to make this mainstream because this is not mainstream. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's starting to become mainstream now mm -hmm. uh, because now even the doctors, and the physicians and the surgeons, now they're opening up to this technology and they're using it now with the clients. And the reason is because it's just so easy. It's non-invasive, it's just energy. It's just mm -hmm. magnetic waves and sounds. Um, and they're getting incredible results. We had somebody who put it on, like, there's this uh, a young lady who couldn't speak. So uh, she saw the, um, the, uh, the doctor and then he put the cheek call on her head Wow. And then in a few minutes, she started talking. Wow. Yeah. Um, this, and then there's lots of stories like that. We had somebody who had 40 years of intense back pain from an injury that never healed from soccer. 
And she, he you know, obviously he never played soccer ever since, but he put it, a cheek on his back. And then 60 days later, he had no pain. He, and he was functioning 100%. Uh, and there's more and more, like, like there's so many thousand you know, stories that we have. And uh, so it just uh, gives me so much, you know, motivation and, and honor to be, you know, become and put, you know, bring this to the world and, and to, uh, ex and to expand this energy and frequency and offer it to people who really need it. So what's the next, what's next for Chi Coil? Next for Chi Coil, um, hitting the million, the million people, the million lives touched Mark. I understand that. Yeah. Um, next for Chi Coil right now, I'm just want to build this community more, right. With people like yourself, um, and then having them, you know, experience the benefits of it and then sharing it with other people. That's, that's basically all it, all it is. It's, Literally the ripple effect. Yeah. Just ripple effect, just, just building relationships and, um, just keep doing what I do, which is, um, you know, keep working on the technology, improving it. Uh, we have another technology that we're, uh, relaunching. It's called Chi Energy AI. I'll let you try it next time. Okay. Uh, but that's pretty exciting too, because, um, uh, it uses quantum entanglement and AI mm. It's like pretty, pretty high, high, um, level stuff. Um, yeah. So just, just continue to work on these technologies, continue to build this community and educate people, uh, so that they can understand that the world is not material. It's not allopathic, right? The world is energy mm -hmm. and we're all connected, whether we know it or not, we are every every point in space is connected to each other and every point in space has the entire creation within within it there was um i started thinking about brain waves and neural pathways and i mentioned i'm a traumatic brain injury survivor and so you think of those neural pathways and i think about you know, underneath the, the earth mycelium with the mushrooms and those interconnected you know, webs of co communication. And I think about the stars and I think about the internet and I think about how they all are eerily feel exactly the same to me. And I think about how there's a lot more to what we experience that we don't yet know. And that trust in whatever that is, you know, what used to sometimes be once a month, once every couple of weeks turns into every day, multiple times a day, that tingly, you know, lit up feeling. Uh -huh. you know and what to be in that level of flow or connection all day if possible what and then everyone what does the world look and feel like and I start to notice my relationship with the physical world shift where you know you hear the latest headline of the day and what could have been really provoking and aggravating it just feels different it's like huh well, that's interesting. And there's just a lot of space because it feels like the reality that I'm connected to is much different than that headline. And I know that there's a lot of people that are resonating at that level. And it almost feels like we're just waiting for exfoliation or, you know, a digestive cleanse to occur. And, you know, and I don't want to be full on esoteric. And then the new earth and utopia is here, but there is something emerging that we haven't yet seen. And if you get stuck in the fear paradigm, it can debilitate you and there's something else here. And so those little glimpses of that every day remind me of that. And it's like living into that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like, it's like the reason why people go into these retreats um, or, or like vacations, right? When you go to somewhere where it's pristine, it's nature, they're away from technology and um, they have all this positive energy and frequencies from from the environment like from the trees from the ocean from animals and so on right mm -hmm. and they feel great and they feel like they're so connected with with um, mother earth and connected with everyone else and 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 the universe and then when you come back to your home and then you watch the news and you read the newspaper and all that and then you come back to this all these negative vibrations and negative frequencies um well, then you're basically kind of subject to your environment, mm -hmm. right? But what if you can change your environment and program it so that it's always 
has that uh, energetic vibration from nature. So that's what the chikos do because we emulate those frequencies that are natural and that are healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Just like if you go to the beach or go to the forest and or breathe the breathe the ozone and get the, those negative ions and so on. Um, uh, this basically creates this bubble, this healing environment around you so that is as if you're always on a retreat, you're always in this meditation retreat, you're always in, in the middle of nature. So let's say you go in the middle of nature on vacation, you read, read this headline that's negative, then it doesn't affect you because you, you already have this positive frequency in your in yourself, right? So, so it's the same thing, like, but now you don't need to go to these places to get that and to recharge yourself. You can recharge yourself every day, right? And every that day. feels like ultimate integration, right? Like the point is to be in your life and not to feel like you're escaping your life, you know, if there was a point, quote unquote. And, and that to me serves as such an integration tool where it allows you to be in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be in your life. So, and, and that's the way to live life to the fullest, right? Because if you're not, like you said, present, get, get to be where you are, then you're not really experiencing your life. You're just kind of, um, you know, asleep. Yeah, so, existing right. asleep. Yeah. Which it seems like social media, for example, is one of the many tools that can really have that effect, you know, to put you into that state. And I'm not saying don't go on social media, uh, but if you start to notice your relationship with everything, there's empowering ways to be in an altered state and disempowering ways to be in an altered state. And so if you start to tune into, whoa, what happens when I do this and then this and then this and notice those subtleties in the shift, obviously something, you know, getting the cheek oil in, you're going to notice an a empowering shift in your state. But I think there's a powerful invitation before your cheek coil comes in the mail <laughs> to start noticing, hey, what are some of these activities that have a disempowering effect that could be really decreasing that energetic opportunity in an empowering way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Which I could yeah. talk about that for another hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, it's been uh, really great talking to you. I learned a lot and I'm um, very excited about uh, what you're doing with uh, Lila Life. And I uh, would love to hear more about that next time. Awesome, David. I'll keep you posted and just sending you, you know, the, I would say, um, yeah, it feels like a wave, just a wave to the million, you know, like, I feel like that tide, like, hey, this, this is powerful. And if this is feeling resonant to you, explore this and that wave to a million. Uh, it's not, yeah, it, it feels like, wow, a million people resonating. Mm -hmm. Like I can only imagine it's gonna make that. A, it's going to make a dramatic difference in the mm -hmm. overall um, psyche of, of the entire world, I think, right? Because um, there's a, there's a scientist who said that you only need a square root of 1% of a population to affect the entire population, right? So let's say you got like how many billion people on earth, like 6 billion. I don't know how many billion. It might be more than that now. Okay. So you do a square root of that. Uh -huh. which is something like half a million that's a square mm -hmm. root and you take one percent of that so it's like five thousand mm -hmm. so you actually only need a few thousand people to affect the entire population mm -hmm. so a million people is more than enough <laughs> we've covered ourselves we got we got a little margin of error there yeah yeah so that's <laughs> that'll be great and then awesome. we'll see people uh healthier we'll see people happier more uh more connected more enlightened and just more empowered. And in what emerges from that is very curious to me, you know, what becomes available that we don't yet even know when people are operating from that space. It's, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of art, what kind of industry, what, what comes through. Yeah. It'll be like the energy renaissance. Yes. I <laughs> hope you have that coined. I love that. That's a blog post or something. It's the next podcast. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Oh, awesome, All right, Linda. David. Take care. Thank you. And we'll have a special discount. If anybody does want to explore Chi Coil, they can get the Leela Life promo code. And I'll be linking that on my channels, but make sure you get that. Okay, definitely. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thanks, David. Signing off. Bye-bye.